guys, this may not be doable. We had torrential rains with flooding yesterday evening, or otherwise last night. So that's super saturated, super wet. We're gonna see how she does. And I'm gonna actually let Lloyd hold the camera. <laughs> There she is, you guys. Let's pull her out so we can get on to the next phase of this video. Yeah, she was buried. All right, you guys, I'm with Lloyd. Lloyd, can you tell us what it is that you do for Xmark? I'm gonna get on this side, guys. Um, what do you do for Xmark? I'm a, uh, one of the product managers. So we have a number of product managers that work there. So uh, on the marketing side of the business, people wanna know what a product manager does. I say we translate customer into engineer. Okay. So so you are the go-between when a customer wants something, you're the guy that helps the engineering understand what it is they want? Yeah. Okay. What they're really going for, what they really need, what the issue is we're trying to solve. Okay. And I asked you, you flew in from Lincoln, Nebraska? That's right. And I asked you here because Xmark has five different sizes of mowers with two different frames. Is that right? We have six deck sizes on two different frames. On two right? different frames. And I wanted to know why you have two different frames so that these guys, when they're trying to figure out what they want to buy, know which one to get. Can right. you walk us through that today? Absolutely. That's the goal. Um, so, so you've got two frames, but the overall design of the Starus is is continuous between the mowers yeah right? similar design kind of similar design concept and what we're trying to do you drive that truck like you're driving a lawnmower am i flying around or <laughs> all right so what mower do you use on this site the x mark uh do you just Stars. use you just use the x mark why is it just because it's nimble and and can get in places or handles it's, or what's the one scoop? Of our smaller ones so it's good for the smaller yards it's i mean it, it runs perfect i almost never make any marks of it what do you mean There's almost no never make any marks when you're like turning? turning marks okay it just doesn't tear up grass no i would think it would because it's got a really aggressive tire design they do have very aggressive tires but it doesn't it, you don't you don't see it yeah no okay so that aggressive pattern isn't affecting your uh, results. Okay, so some of the feedback, obviously our old Vantage, a lot of customers uh, really liked our old Vantage. 
um, and we did well with that product. Um, but we, there were some areas where I would say we struggled. Okay. Uh, one of them was serviceability. Uh, there was there was a lot of problem areas, things that were hard to just service on that machine. Um, and the other one was hillside performance. Um, it it did well in some conditions, but not every condition, especially going up and down hills. So as we started this project and got out talking to customers, some of the things they really wanted in the product was better hillside performance, uh, easier serviceability, um, durability, those type of things. So that's when we went to a clean sheet of paper and started designing this product. Uh, we kept those things in mind. How do we improve hillside stability? Okay. And make it serviceable. So what we did was, uh, you know, you'll see the engine is placed back lower down this mower and all of them follow kind of that same pattern even up to the big one over there uh, the engine is back and boat and lower just in front of the wheels um, but so how do you do that and keep the machine serviceable so you have access up here you got access to your belts you know deck belts break and they usually break at the worst possible time so uh, you can have access easy access here to change a belt and field um, all your normal service and maintenance stuff, you just flip this up. And all your normal maintenance, you can check your hydrofluid, check your oil, make sure your screen's clear uh, before you start your day. So your normal maintenance uh, and service can be done here and then you can pop this off and you get more accessibility for you know, oil drain, um, those type of things. So just trying to make it access. This screen actually pops off. You can take these screws out, there's six of them around, and this um, shroud comes off. And so it gives you more access here to the, the pumps if you need to or need to do anything up in the tower. All right, let's take a look at how bad this chews up grass. So it's not like the E series is the economy model and the S series is the super model. Right. It's just the just you've narrowed the frame. That's it. Right. What are the bells and whistles that would be? Can you just show sure. us the differences? So I... yeah. So on the S series, you're gonna have um, on the S series, you're gonna have EFI. Uh, you're gonna have higher horsepower options. You're gonna have Kawasaki FX engine and Kohler EFI engines. On the E series, you have, you have uh, Kawasaki FS engines. Um, so there's a, a difference. In Is the there engines. a difference in the life expectancy of those engines? That's a great question. I'd have to refer to Kawasaki to be able to answer that. What their warranty is on those? Okay. Um, Tip typically, I've when I've you know done the research, there's been a difference in yeah. the life expectancy of the engine. We ex the X. Uh, the expectancy of the use of the machine, I think, probably more determines that. The smaller okay. machines are going to be used on smaller properties uh, for shorter periods of time. Like you look around here, it's a big property. They're probably mowing with a 60-inch, uh, you know, rider or something like that. Um, whereas these smaller machines, they're going to be on and off of properties, smaller properties, and going in and out of gates, those type of things. So the, the application is going to be different for the different mowers too. So the life expectancy of the mower is the same but the application that the mowers have is different. Okay, that, that helps sense. out. So if they're doing a lot of, uh, you know, if you have customers that have, you know, you're doing mostly small properties, uh, you're dealing with gates or just, you know, tight areas, you're gonna probably want to steer towards maybe an E-series because of the application. Okay. Uh, whereas if you have larger, bigger properties, uh, corporate, you know, properties, commercial properties, those type of things, you're going to want to probably go to a S series. Is there any operator features that are missing from the E series that they may get on the S series? Yep. Probably the most uh, noticeable one is the, the height of cut adjustment. So on the E series, uh, you know, a lot of competitors, or the competitors in this space with like a 32 inch deck have a fixed deck system. So we have a, a bit of a difference. We have, you can adjust the deck, uh, but you have to do it with the four pins. Um, we, uh, so that's on all E series models. That's on all E series models. And so on the S series um, over here, we've got what? S series, you have the height of cut from the operator position. So it's more like a, a riding mo, you know, riding mower, um, like our lasers or something like that. You can adjust the, the height of cut and, uh, lock that up first. 
Okay, so the motor, height of cut, those are two fundamental differences from the E-Series to the S-Series, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, you have higher ground speed. Uh, you're going to go 10 miles an hour on this machine, you're going to go 7.5 on the E-Series. Again, application specific, if they're using it on smaller properties, they're going to be going slower, larger properties. Serviceability, has that changed at all? Nope, serviceability, the same serviceability uh, is designed into this machine as on the E-Series. Um, Higher fuel capacity. We have two five-gallon tanks on the S-series for uh, you know longer uh, run times. There's five gallon on the the E-series. Hill stability. We haven't really touched on that because that's something that guys may not even be aware of. My team was not aware of it till I literally had to point out how the design of the mower improved hill stability. Do you want to walk us through that? Yeah. I mean that was, and that was I think. Some of the unique part of this design is you have the engine down lower so we're able to move the operator forward uh, we'll put the engine down lower but even things like where the fuel sits right you have the, the bulk of the fuel in these uh, fuel tanks is sitting down low just in front of the wheels um, so you, and we we took uh, things like the pumps right and moved the pumps up here so now you have the pumps which are considerably lighter instead of being like a you know, unit ZT type transmission on the on the wheels. We still have a pump and wheel motor, but it allows us to put the mass of the weight and the engine lower and put the pumps up higher. So really for hill stability, there's a couple things. You, you almost want to marry the operator to the machine so that he's got a good feel. Because when he's in one of those tighter spots, he wants to feel like he's really in control. At least that's been my experience. And so when we look at this, let's look at this E-Series because I see where you've, I mean in all of them, but right here you can actually see where you've now placed the operator between the wheels, which was never right. done before. Right. Yeah, and on our Vantage uh, design previously, it was set back um, behind the machine. Uh, that was the design we, we had to go with at the time. Um, you know, but we have now we at the a little bit of more freedom to, to move the operator around so so we didn't have to be confined to where the operator was as we were doing the design so we so that was uh, that was nice and that helps and yes obviously having the operator between the wheels um, that obvious feedback that customers feel more a part of the machine more in control so you put the engine between the wheels and the operator between the wheels so you make a stickier mower on steeper hills you've also got a fairly aggressive tread design on your tires yep. I noticed that right away because, um, I mean, that's that's also helps really adhere you to the side of a hill instead of having you slipping and sliding. Also, centrifugal force now, right? Because you now have you don't have an operator hanging out in the back. Correct. As you're turning, they're not going to feel, feel like feel they're that. in a rodeo. Right. Okay. But one of the positive things customers told us about the Vantage when we were talking about it is they liked uh, this. They liked the suspension on it. So, so we. So we didn't want to lose that feature, right? Right. And that's one of the negatives you get with standing between the wheels. You're right over the axles is you're going to feel every bump. So we had to, uh, so the engineers did a great job just designing in suspension on this thing to keep the operator, um, you know, from getting beat up. Now you have dual fuel tanks. Do they draw equally or does, does the operator have to switch between them? Nope, they draw evenly at the same time. So you want to have fuel in both. Okay. Uh, because it's, if one goes empty, you're going to be sucking, sucking air. air. Okay. Uh, the reason we do that, they don't, you know, if you put it on a flat, they don't auto, you know, level out. Yep. Um, the reason we do that is because we want to keep the weight balance. Yep. If you don't want to have too much weight on this on the downhill side or, on the, you know, the uphill side. So we keep them level and they draw, they draw equally. Now, is there anything else you want to point out between these two mowers for people that are looking at wondering which one to get? I think you've, you first just gotta under, you know, you gotta evaluate for yourself what are your customers and what it was my application, right? To understand how I'm gonna use the machine might steer me towards one machine or the other. Uh, the 44 machine, the 44 inch uh, deck, you know, versus a 48 inch. Well, the price difference, I can't remember what they are retail, maybe thousand uh, dollars or for fifteen hundred dollars difference. Uh, so why would I go with a 44 or 48 versus a 44? Well. Um, you know, 44 is on the small small deck, but it has more trim on the trim side, right? So if that's important to the customer. Okay, show me exactly what you're talking about. So on the trim side here, uh, 
you have more deck overhanging outside the, the wheel, right? So I have more room to get in and trim around things. Okay. Whereas the 48 inch deck, this is a 52. So you can imagine a 48 inch is flush. deck is really close to here. So you lose a little bit of trim on that. Yeah. But you give up the features of the single point height of cut and the, the different engine options like the, the FX engine. I'm glad you point that out because that actually is something for these guys to consider, not only just between the E series and the S series, but also in the overall size of the mower because that was one of the things my guys pointed out was that we've got the 48 and he pointed out a few things that you haven't pointed out one of the drawbacks was that he can't really get up tight to houses and stuff because he's worried about scraping his fuel tank but the other thing that he does love about this we got a lot of like mint boxes and stuff that sticks out like this far but i mean you got to mold this much under the grass and the other ones I couldn't get under because it'd be hitting right here. It'd be hitting the engine. But this one I slide right under and I, nothing touches until I get all the way there. But I'm never that far under something. So, so you matter. can get your blades underneath mailboxes and... And yeah, just little things like that. Tree branches makes, and stuff like that, really huh? It really makes a difference. He gets his front end under mailboxes. Right. It saved him tremendously on trim time. He's like, all them rows of mailboxes, I don't have to trim anymore. I'm like, what are you talking about, Jake? He's like, this front end slips right underneath it and I can go right up to it and get all of the mowing done without coming back and weed eating it around it. And then he's, I'm watching him and he's not even, he's not even weed eating around the perimeters of the properties and under trees. He's just putting the lawnmower underneath it because there's no engine he's not worried about taking on he's not taking taking on branches and leaves into the engine because it's all right here right. you know so those are a couple things that you didn't mention and i don't know if you purposely even knew about in this design but from my guys out in the field like my x mark goes out on every single job um because of those advantages now in the next video that we're going to be doing with lloyd we're actually going to be talking about something that I don't think a lot of people know. I didn't know it until we were on the car ride over here. And that is how manufacturers design decks to process their grass. Because every manufacturer has their own concept of what they want to see done. And they create a deck specifically to cut different kinds of grass differently. And we're going to go in detail on that next, right? All right. So you guys stick around. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments down below. And um, do me a favor while you're here, check out these other two videos that I've put right here. God bless and go get them, you guys. And no mowers were harmed in the making of this video. <laughs>